Hello everyone in this video, let us talk about uh, IntelliJ integration for writing your scripts when you are using script runner for Jira. So in case you are trying to uh, learn a script runner for Jira, I highly recommend you to uh, take a look at this page on uh, script runner's uh, documentation online where you can understand how to also use uh, IntelliJ, uh, how to also use IntelliJ for writing scripts uh, uh, for not only Jira, but also for uh, Confluence and uh, also for uh, other applications. And this uh, particular page is uh, really useful because it will help you in uh, first setting up your uh, IntelliJ to work with uh, Jira Confluence and Bitbucket and uh, if you want to first uh, let us say use uh, uh, IntelliJ and uh, this is your very first time what you need to do you need to basically uh, I mean what you can potentially do you can uh, download or you can clone this uh, sample uh, uh, you know project uh, into your uh, of course your computer but uh, when you are uh, using IntelliJ, you can simply clone this using uh, IntelliJ and it will of course uh, create a folder or on your uh, local uh, uh, computer. And uh, once you do this uh, on your local computer, you will get this uh, folder, uh, which is uh, script runner samples. Now, if you look at this folder, you have uh, subfolders like Bamboo, Bitbucket, Confluence, and Jira. And if you want to let us say run jira what you can do what you can do is simply run this uh, command um, mvn jira debug and it will basically uh, create a jira environment a jira development environment on your local computer so why are we talking about intellij uh, first of all we have to discuss it very briefly so if you re read this documentation you of course you can go through these uh, points so just to summarize, if you are maintaining a lot of scripts uh, or you are co collaborating with uh, maybe other developers and of course uh, when you have to worry about uh, different scripts, uh, you also um, have to version control it because uh, of course when you are writing a script you need to uh, make sure you are doing changes and uh, I don't have to explain you the benefits of version control and uh, of course when you're using a proper in, for proper ID like IntelliJ, you have other uh, advantages. You can write your scripts very quickly. Uh, you can uh, quickly access uh, your log file. You can do debugging. And uh, of course, uh, it has autocomplete features. So once you uh, clone this particular uh, sample project on your computer, you can do this using IntelliJ and of course, uh, there is a link here that will show you how to do this on your local computer uh, and uh, when you have of course some uh, uh, things like maven and uh, when you have your environment ready all you need to do you need to simply run this command and you have like a proper environment up and running so once you run this run this command uh, in uh, on your local like uh, mvn uh, let me show you this uh, running on my computer so this is something that is uh, running on my computer which is uh, a fully functional jira instance for development and for development purpose and uh, uh, let me show you how to access it so when you have to access your jira instance you just need to open this url localhost 8080 slash jira because you're working on jira of course this will change for uh, confluence uh, but, but but when you when you do this you have your jira instance up and running and uh, if you go to your console let us see let, let us say you want to uh, write a script uh, of course uh, when you write a script you have to if you're learning how to uh, write scripts the first thing that you can do is you can go to console script runner's console and when you go to script runner's console uh, you have of course uh, the option to uh, 
simply use the console to write scripts but uh, since now we have uh, IntelliJ with us uh, you can write scripts in IntelliJ and you can store it uh, on your uh, local um, folder where you have your Jira setup so if you place your scripts uh, in your uh, I mean there is a directory here uh, under resources you can play place your scripts like let us say there is a script called user count or maybe if you look at the script that comes with uh, this sample project there is a script called scratch script uh, if you go to your console and if you type in the name of your script like let us say you want to run the scratch script you can simply type in here uh, your script name and uh, to, to run this of course you need to click on the run button and uh, it will uh, display the result here which is uh, great because uh, your script is actually on your local computer and uh, you can of course write your script in a proper IDE where you have a lot of other features uh, as compared to of course the script runner's uh, script editor uh, and of course this is nothing but a, sim a simple script where you are maybe just displaying some uh, information maybe you are you are writing uh, some return statements or maybe printl so let us say if you want to uh, do hello world you can uh, save this if you go back to your uh, uh, script and if you, if you run this you can see the output here so this is of course uh, one example uh, the other thing that you can do is uh, you can uh, also connect your uh, ID to your uh, Jira log file so that you can do um, debugging. So uh, once you do this, uh, you will get this. Uh, let us say if you want to stop the script at this particular uh, uh, point, uh, and if you go back to your script and if you run this, the script will uh, the script will uh, use the uh, debugger. So let us. Uh, try to do it and uh, if you run this I think uh, there is something wrong here if you check the debugger here you can basically connect it to uh, your uh, debugger for uh, for your uh, scripting uh, so you have to connect it to your debugger and uh, and of course if you read the documentation uh, you will uh, be able to do it very quickly so now we are connected to debugger and if I go to my script and if I run this, it will go back uh, to the IDE where you can see this uh, debugger running. And uh, the moment you finish the execution, you can uh, see that your script is now finished. So this is really good because now you have a debugger to use where you can uh, uh, just do debugging and uh, you have the option to also um, do it in your ID with all the features of uh, a debugger and uh, you have also access to your Jira logs so if you uh, take a look at your logs here let me just uh, if you connect it to your uh, logs let me just click on the uh, configuration if I click on debug and if I click on edit my debug uh, configurations I have I have the I have the option to also connect it to my uh, Jira logs so all I need to do, I need to just uh, specify, specify the path here and uh, once you do this, let me just uh, um, just connect it to my debugger and uh, run this again. So if I maybe run a script which is uh, this one, user count and if I go back to my script and if I run this, let us see if it runs or not. So yes, uh, we can see the script running and uh, there is something on in the log tab. Now if I go back to my uh, to my uh, ID, under my Jira logs, I can see this uh, message here. So this message, because we have some uh, log uh, statements, uh, we are trying to uh, display something in the log, we can uh, access it in your of course console when you're working with script runner but also in your IDE. 
So this is really good because uh, uh, you have, of course, a better capability of debugging your scripts. And uh, there are other features if you go and uh, read the documentation. Uh, so we talked about uh, debugging, which of course you can configure. We talked about uh, uh, connecting it to uh, the Jira log so that you can uh, also see those messages, uh, which is of course uh, also mentioned in the documentation. I'm just uh, uh, trying to replicate what we have in this official documentation. The other thing that you can also do is uh, when you have IntelliJ, you can also connect it to your, uh, to your Jira source code. So if you have a Jira license, you have the option to also connect it to your Jira source code. And when you do this, you can take a look at uh, different uh, uh di different uh, uh you know uh java docs uh, for example if you have uh, uh let us say you want to know about a specific uh, method or you want to access the java doc so if you remember we talked about uh, in one of my previous videos uh, i showed you how to use the code editor where you can uh, press ctrl j to access java docs you can actually use uh, command uh, if you press command and if you click on let us say user manager you can uh, take a look at uh, different things here that uh, will actually uh, be much more meaningful when you connect it to your java source code or jira source code and this is uh, amazing because uh, this will really make your uh, uh, make your script writing really uh, really efficient because let us say you are working with uh, one of the script where you are trying to let us say uh, do something with uh, this user manager and uh, since we have the autocomplete feature here uh, we can of course take a look at different things that you can do with this uh, um, you know autocomplete where you can have the where you have easy access to all the methods uh, like you know get use with user manager you can get the user uh, details you can do further things here like maybe um, you want to know if you have access to the user what else you can do further you can access to the you can access the name you can access to the user id but uh, the good thing is that if you want to know more about what what this particular method is doing so right now you can see here that the get user is depreciated you should be using something else uh, so you get these indications so and if you press command and if you click on it you are taken to uh, the actual uh, java file and uh, you can understand how to use these methods and it will really make your uh, script writing experience uh, much more efficient and uh, easy so we will uh, continue using a script runner integration with IntelliJ and I will definitely show you more things that we can potentially do when we have to write scripts. If you read this particular page, uh, you also have some, in some instructions about uh, how to run a specific version of uh, Jira. So right now, if you download this uh, documentation, uh, the, the sample project, you uh, and if you take a look at this documentation, you have the option to, take, to basically use Jira 7.13 but if you go back to your IntelliJ and if you open the pom.xml file here so uh, let me open the pom.xml file that comes with Jira we are running I believe uh, uh, Jira 7.13.11 but of course we can change it to something else like maybe version 8.8.0 you also have the option to um, if you talk about let us say running or installing or using Jira software and maybe Jira service desk, you can just include this in your pom.xml file for uh, Jira. And uh, this is really useful because when you're writing your uh, scripts, you may want to also test it for Jira software or maybe Jira service desk. And uh, you can of course do it very easily and very quickly uh, by modi modifying few lines. You also have some other options like, uh, you know, you can change the default port. You can also do some um, test. You can execute your test cases. If you know how to uh, configure it with your uh, Groovy scripts that you are uh, 
uh, writing but uh, we will probably talk about this uh, in uh, future videos and uh, I wanted to spend some time today talking about these features because uh, I think uh, uh, when you're using IntelliJ with uh, this integration it will really make your uh, overall experience not of writing scripts but also troubleshooting and uh, uh, learning much more easier so i hope you found this video useful and you learned something new today thank you very much